Hey everyone, we got some great news for Palantir stock investors across several key fronts. Notably, its government revenue accelerated, revenue growth increased by more than 20%. The net revenue retention rate, which is a key metric, increased meaningfully for Palantir in the latest quarter as well. So I'm going to talk about those two key factors and more in this video highlighting some great news for Palantir stock investors. So let's get right into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. So as I highlighted, Palantir's second quarter of government revenue increased by 23% year over year. U.S. government revenue increased by 24%. And that's encouraging because the company had always done well with U.S. government revenue. It's not been shy about stating that it wants to support the U.S. government and its allies. So the U.S. government and Palantir have had a close relationship. But what was surprisingly positive is that international revenue growth for governments was also solid in its latest quarter. That was really surprising and good news for Palantir stock investors. But I think more importantly, the net dollar retention rate was a was a very positive surprise in the latest quarter for Palantir. The net dollar retention rate, which measures how much existing customers spend with you in their second full year versus how much they spent with you in their first full year. Any number above 100% signals that existing customers are increasing their spending with you. And for Palantir, that number came in at 114%, which was an increase of 300 basis points, or in other words, 3%, from the previous quarter. So just from the previous quarter, they had that nice bump up. And this metric doesn't even include all of the newer customers that Palantir has recently signed on board, which they've done a lot of recently. This is looking really encouraging for Palantir stock investors. Now, Palantir stock price has performed exceptionally well in recent months, so the stock price is hitting record highs. Still, it's hard to ignore the company's excellent progress across several key categories, not to mention remaining deal value, which ended the second quarter at $4.3 billion, an increase of 26% year over year. Remaining deal value eventually turns into revenue. For instance, if Palantir signs a contract for eight years, $2 billion, right? That goes into remaining deal value. And then as Palantir performs the service, then it can count that deal value as revenue. So Palantir can't count revenue when it makes a contract. It can't say, well, we just signed an eight-year deal for $2 billion. That's $2 billion in revenue. It can't do that. That's against the gap accounting principles. What it can do is record that deal value initially and then as it performs the service every month or every quarter, it can then start to count that as revenue. So this deal value turns into revenue. So when Palantir makes an announcement signaling that its deal value, total remaining deal value increased 26%, that's a good sign for future revenue growth because you know that's turning into revenue over time. So what you want to see as a Palantir stock investor is the company continue to sign these deals and to continue to increase the total remaining deal value because that signals that revenue is going to continue growing. But if it falls, if Palantir doesn't sign new contracts and every month and every quarter it performs on the contracts it signed in the past, the deal value will slowly drop as it serves those contracts. So it needs to replace those with new deals so that it can continue increasing and signal that revenue growth will continue for several quarters and several years. And as long as you see the total remaining deal value increasing at or above the rate of revenue growth, which was very close in the latest quarter, revenue growth was 27%. Total deal value growth was 26%. So very close. That's good. As long as you see that, you can feel comfortable as a Palantir stock investor, at least in terms of top-line revenue growth for the foreseeable future. The company's adjusted operating margin of 37% marked the seventh consecutive quarter of adjusted operating margins expanding. You'd love to see that as an investor. The company's revenue is growing, and with the revenue growth, 
margins are expanding, profit margins are growing. That's evidence of economies in scale. The larger the company gets, the lower the costs are as a percentage of total revenue. The lower the costs are as a percentage of total revenue because the costs don't grow with revenue. The costs stay relatively flat and revenue grows. I'll give you one example of that. Let's say you're paying a lease expense for your corporate headquarters of $10 million, let's just say. If your revenue grows, your lease expense on the corporate headquarters doesn't grow. It stays flat. And so you create a gap between your expense and your revenue, which expands that margin. Now, not every company has that type of characteristic within the business. Some companies, when their revenue grows, their costs grow faster than their revenue. And I've highlighted many of those companies as ones to avoid. And I've talked extensively because of that metric. The company doesn't look like it has good prospects. It's growing revenue, sure, but its costs are growing faster and it keeps losing money on the bottom line. That's not an attractive investment. Anyone can grow their revenue if they're willing to absorb losses on the bottom line and willing to offer their product at a continuously inexpensive a price so low that it doesn't even cover their cost. That's not what's going on with Palantir. They are demonstrating economies in scale. That being said, management says, we continue to expect expenses to increase through the back half of the year as they invest in the product pipeline and the hard technical problems and reducing bottlenecks across the journey from prototype to production. However, they are going to calibrate expense growth below revenue growth for the full year so that they can continue delivering on their goals of gap profitability and operating income. So Palantir fully admitting like, look, our revenue growth is excellent and our customer acquisition is excellent. We need to hire more people so that we can serve these customers. But we're going to calibrate that so that we make sure that our expenses don't grow faster than our revenue grows. So we're going to make sure that revenue is always growing faster than expense so that we're always creating that gap between revenue and expense, which leaves profit on the bottom line so the business can survive and shareholders can reap a return on investment. All of which is great news for Palantir stock investors. Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.